Greetings, salutations, welcome to Tech 3D. My name is Neil Cross, Autodesk expert to need as I sit here dripping in the mud, eh, in my jack way. Uh, not an Autodesk employee, though. Never have been. But um, as, I, as I sit here with Andrew watching, probably, who's uh, just panicking with trepidation as to what's about to unfold. It's fine, mate. It'll be, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, the, the, probably because the, ti the title is factually correct, because that's what's being said. It's not what I'm saying, but I've put it that way because... Clicks. Anyway, this is going to be a long-form video. I'm going to be talking about a, a situation that's going on with Autodesk, uh, or that pertains to Autodesk. And it's a four- or five-year-old thing, which has recently been bumped, right? The guy behind this campaign has bumped his proverbial forum post, got a bit of traction, and he's landed on the Bloomberg uh, news site. Now, I don't know if you're a subscriber to the Bloomberg news out. I'm not. But it, this appeared on my Google feed a few days ago, and I thought, right, this is up my street, because it relates to Autodesk Inventor and also Autodesk News as well. And I'm, I'm aware of this. It, it, it's about four or five years old, and it's all to do with this guy here, Johnny, I, I butcher his name, Le Mercier. He's got a campaign going called Autodesk Earth, where he's basically, in no uncertain terms, accusing Autodesk of being complicit in the destruction of the planet. They're providing tools for mining companies to dig up the earth, burn fossil fuels, Autodesk are profiteering from it, and they don't care about the world. That's that's the basic foundation of his entire argument. They're the most polluting software company on the planet? Question mark. Because I'm not, I'm not saying they are, for legal reasons, but, I'm, but I'm, it's like, I'm not saying you're stupid, mate. I'm not saying that. But I did, question mark. Right? It's, it's like that. And he's, his whole thing is this. Autodesk is a software company. Their branding is based on sustainability, which it partly is, and that's true. They are very, very sustainable and very clean. Yet Autodesk is providing software expertise and training to build, operate, and maintain the largest coal mine in Europe, which is factually barnacles. It's absolute hee-haw. No, they're not. But look at that. I mean, that is an impressive vehicle. It's called the Bagger 290. It's a huge vehicle run by RWE Energy in a coal mine in uh, Germany. It takes out the coal, comes along here, gets processed along a conveyor, dropped in the vehicle, and off it goes. Le Mercier uh, came across this. This is the the foundation of his beef. OS made a success story a, a long time ago about how the, the, their software is used with the, the mining vehicle and how Autodesk were involved, blah, blah, blah. And it's really got his back up. Uh, he started the campaign and it's resulted in a very recent Bloomberg article saying one of tech's cleanest companies is making tools for coal mines and oil drills. Now, I don't know if Le Mercier is, is BS'd uh, Brody Ford, but this is a factually incorrect headline. And to be honest, the whole article, which I'm not going to read in its entirety, I'll pick out bits, but it's dripping in factually incorrect statements. Quite slanderous at times, in fact. Autodesk could get litigious with this if they wanted to. They won't, but um, I'm just here to say some of the stuff that Autodesk probably would want to say. Andrew's probably thinking he'll shut up and just press stop on the recording uh, because I don't agree with anything you're saying. I don't know, but I, I, I can, I'm just going to say what I feel about this and whether or not they agree, I don't know. But factually, Autodesk do not make tools for coal mines and oil drills. They don't. It's not true. Nothing that Autodesk produces is specifically tailored for the mining industry. Uh, and any reasonable person who reads this headline who doesn't know what Autodesk, who, who Autodesk are, which is a lot of people, would assume Autodesk make excavate the buckets, right? Tools for coal mines or drills or whatever, right? That dig the ground up or pipes that suck out the, the, the oil or whatever. They don't. They're not selling products to oil to fuel companies that are tools for coal mines. It's factually incorrect. Autodesk software is generic, industry-specific design software, but by industry-specific, not tools for coal mines. How do I know? Right, full disclosure on a couple of things. My former employer was an OEM vehicle manufacturer for, guess what, mining vehicles. I worked at a company that made mining vehicles. They made vehicles that do other things, and that, that could be digging trenches to lay cables, right? But they made mining vehicles. And we were an Autodesk site. We used Inventor exclusively. And there is, right, look, there is not, I know Inventor better than most people on the planet. Been using it for near 20 years. I know every button, option, ribbon bar, feature, dialog box, there is not one tool in the entirety of Autodesk Inventor that is specifically designed to help and assist with the design of mining vehicles or mining tools. 
nothing. Sure, Inventor's got like rubber hoses and hydraulic parts and O-rings and spring generators and gears and whatever else, but they're just, they can, guess what? They can be used in any industry, any industry. They're not exclusive to mining. The fact that a mining vehicle has a hydraulic hose, so does your car, mate. So, um, yeah, that, that's factually incorrect statement. But this guy has been on an absolute rampage over the last three or four years. And it started with tweeting Andrew. And Andrew's, pr- I would very much guess, regretting giving this guy the time of day. But um, he replied to uh, to Le Mercier by saying, your passion is appropriate and necessary, but we disagree on the role of Autodesk products. These, ve- these machines will continue to be built with or without Autodesk products. Now, you probably shouldn't have said that because that just comes across as, look, bad things are going to happen whether or not we help it or not. So we'll just carry on doing bad things. That's what a, an activist or somebody with an agenda will twist a statement like that to mean. And it was twisted in that way. That's why it's important to invest in clean technologies and support policies and penalise dirty ones. Yes. But he didn't stop there. He just carried on going, just like sending out email after email, tweet after tweet to a whole bunch of Autodesk staff to a point where Autodesk had to like send out a company-wide email to all of their employees to say, this is how you handle this guy, because he's just going to emerge out of nowhere and start you know, beating on you. You probably don't know who he is. Uh, to, to the point where he even tweeted out or emailed a whole bunch of people who've got public links to Autodesk in some capacity. Autodesk slash RWE partnership generates 100 million tonnes of CO2 a year. Look, Autodesk do not have a partnership with RWE. They supply them licenses. If you want to call that a partnership, then Autodesk have a partnership with Microsoft, who will have corporate agreements with the biggest companies in the world. Same will Adobe and Google and Amazon. They will all have corporate enterprise accounts with a huge mining company. So if you want to call that a partnership, then you have to extend that out to everyone else. So I contacted Autodesk executives individually. These Mostly these people are not Autodesk executives. Like, for example, this is probably why you're not getting a good reception from Autodesk, because you've harassed John Walker. Yes, he's the founder of Autodesk, but he left the company in the mid-90s and has nothing to do with them anymore. He's got no links to Autodesk at all, other than having the founder of Autodesk in the early 80s in his bio. Yet you've just emerged out of someone's armpit like a chihuahua barking at him about climate change and how Autodesk sold Inventor to a mining company. He's got no idea. He left before Inventor even existed. So, and Stephen Hooper, nobody messes with Hoop Dog. Carl White, on the other hand, ah, no, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, come on, like Carl Bass, he, he he stepped down as CEO in 2017. He's still on the board as an advisor, but he's, he doesn't have anything to do with the day-to-day operations of Autodesk. So that's probably why you're not getting a good reception from Autodesk. And the, the whole argument is dripping in hypocrisy and incorrect statements and facts. And that's, that's never more so apparent than if you look at this success story, which is what this is all based off of. Now, these success stories, I know exactly how these work. Because, right, again, full disclosure, at my previous employer, I started the ball rolling to have a success story done. Not a mining success story. The vehicles that we manufactured could be used for other things. But I started the ball rolling. The way these things work, Autodesk have a team of people for generate these success stories. They'll put them on your case and they will ask you a ton of questions. Their ultimate goal is to find out as much as they can about how Autodesk looks good. That's what it, that's what it's about. They'll ask you what your workflows are, how a certain software workflow helped with a certain thing, and they will big that up, get data sets. They'll want to emphasize how certain Autodesk bits and pieces made you better. And the whole point of it is so that other companies in the same industry who maybe want to acquire new software can see that one of their competitors is using Autodesk and they're doing well, and that is proof that it can work in their industry, in their field. That's how the success stories work. I started the ball rolling for this myself, so I know how these work. And if Autodesk can be told or can find out that their software is responsible for everything you see, trust me, mate, they'll say that. But guess what? They can't because Autodesk software had nothing to do with the design of this vehicle. Now, I don't know if the activist Le Mercier even read this success story or understood what was being said or chose to selectively ignore certain bits because it kind of was damaging to his case, maybe. I I don't know. But up here at the top right, it specifically, explicitly states that this vehicle, which is called the Bagger 290, 
the one that's shown in Le Mercier's video, digging up the ground, the one that he's very upset about. I'm not sure why he's got a picture of vehicles demolishing buildings that look like they've got historical relevance. Autodesk, have, they've very publicly had a significant involvement in the rebuilding of the Notre Dame. Autodesk do not go around demolishing historic buildings. It's very, very misleading to put that in there. Anyway, up here, it says the Bagger 290, the world's largest bucket wheel excavator, was built by Krupp Industries, not RWE, it was built by Krupp Industries in 1979. Do you know what the relevance of the date 1979 is? Autodesk didn't even exist in 1979 when that vehicle was designed and built. It predates any computer-aided design of any usable description or form. That vehicle was made by engineers on drawing boards using stencils, pencils, protractors. Nothing about Autodesk today, or even 10, 20 years ago, had anything to do with this vehicle. So what was Autodesk's involvement in this vehicle, you, you may ask? Well, I'll turn me off because I'm overriding the bottom right. Uh, the technical centre, this was the most the success agents could get out of uh, RWE. Their technical centre uses Autodesk Inventor to design its replacement parts. That's it. That was the most they could get out of Autodesk's involvement in this whole coal mine. They use Inventor to make some spare parts for this vehicle when certain bits and pieces break. What you've got to ask yourself is, how big of a cog is that in the overall operational wheel of this coal mine? Compared to, I don't know, the, the toilets that the, the workers shit in, right? Compared to windows on the computers, the, the the hardware, the laptops, Dell. I mean, Dell will have a corporate agreement with RWE. They know who they are. They provide the hardware that the software is installed on. Why not go after Dell? That's a bigger cog in this wheel. If a part breaks on this vehicle and they need to use Inventor to design it, to then 3D print it or whatever, that's a very small part of this. And they could use any software to do that, really could. That doesn't minimize the damage this vehicle is doing, but it's just a fact. So this whole campaign is based upon some spare parts getting made for it, which then begs the question, well, where are we at? Because this vehicle existed, it was digging up the coal long before Autodesk even existed and came along. That's what I said at the very beginning about how this entire campaign is based on very weak links and loose threads and that's it right there. The hypocrisy doesn't really stop there either. You know, the, I don't really want to go in hard on this guy, but it's a very weak link between Autodesk and this mining operation. In the same way, there's a very weak link between Le Mercier and a very, very polluting sport in the world, Formula One, because Le Mercier himself is a, he claims to be an artist, I mean, sure, point cloud stuff, digital art, I don't know what it is, but he sells his art on a platform called OBJKT. It only took me a matter of seconds to look into this, go to the website and see that this platform that he profits from is underpinned by a cryptocurrency called Tezos that I recognized instantly because Tezos, they fund and sponsor Formula One, both the Red Bull and the McLaren team. That's where I recognized, I think the sponsor Man United as well, the football team, but Formula One, I think they pulled out of Red Bull for, I don't know, reasons, but they still fund McLaren. And Formula One is one of the most polluting, I'm still off the screen, I'm going to put myself back on. Formula One is one of the most polluting sports in the world. They're getting better with sustainable fuels and whatnot, but the travel between races, there's so much gear to shift, it's travel, staff moving around, the design and manufacture of the vehicles, there's a lot of wastage goes on there. It's very, it's a very, very polluting sport. And Le Mercier sells work, therefore profits from a platform that funds Formula One. It's a weak link by proxy, but it's the same number of jumps as it took to get from Autodesk to a mining company destroying the planet. So the hypocrisy is quite real, but it doesn't it doesn't end there because the vehicle this this one this whole thing in question was designed by Krupp Industries. Now I recognise Krupp because Krupp don't exist anymore. They've been shut down and superseded by I don't know if it's a parent company or a, a, a merger, but they're called Thyssen and Krupp now. This and Krupp are not necessarily just an Autodesk account. They're so big. They've got over 100,000 employees. They've got departments doing all kinds all over the world, not just mining vehicles, everything. They will have SolidWorks. You can just do, do a search. Do a Thistle, This and Krupp SolidWorks search in Google. You'll find job adverts requiring engineers who need SolidWorks. So since this 290 bagger vehicle was being manufactured back in 1979, RWE have manufactured or had commissioned newer vehicles. 
And the way this works is RWE are not a design and engineering company. They don't have that expertise. So they put the vehicles out to, to tender. They'll say, right, we've got a specification. We need a mining vehicle. It needs to shift so much product, dig up so much a day. It needs to have X amount of wastage minimized. It needs to be so fast, so powerful, have so many motors. It needs to have a certain uptime, be so efficient. And that's our specification. They'll put that out to tender. And then a number of specialized OEM vehicle manufacturers, like the one I worked at, would look at the tender and go, right, it's going to cost you this much. We can have it ready for 12 months. And there's our there's our uh, bid. Along with their competitors, RWE will pick whoever they want to build it and then commission the vehicle to be made. And then they'll just wait around 12 months later, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully a vehicle turns up. Uh, and that's how it works. So RWE don't even build and manufacture this. It's done by the likes of ThyssenKrupp who aren't exclusively an Autodesk account. And even if they were, they will use multiple suppliers and contractors, agencies and fabricators who use various different... There's so many components to this. It is not just Autodesk. It appears to me that because Autodesk are quite transparent with who's on their board and they're very accessible, which is a good thing, they're just low-hanging fruit and easy to get a hold of and attack. And um, the most visible of them all. And this success story seemed to be the trigger, but it appears... He the, the activists didn't really read what was going on here because it just takes a little bit more research to find that this is a 12 plus year old article at best, right? Possibly older. Last year, SolidWorks had a conference in Australia supporting the coal mining industry. They they are very much complicit in mining in SolidWorks. They've got a huge presence in mining. Le Mercier himself, even on his own website, at the very bottom of it, goes on to say how, you know, it's in an email to, how do you get 250 Autodesk employees' email addresses? I mean, that is that is some graft. But he says, dear Autodesk employees, Australia is burning. Even though the the foundation of his whole thing is how there's, it's a coal mining. I suppose Australia are in the Eurovision Song Contest now, aren't they? So technically Australia are European. Because that's how that works. But yeah, Australia is burning. Venice is, is flooded. Even the Californian fires are intensifying. And, you know, Autodesk is co-responsible for all of the, the fact that the vehicle was made before Autodesk existed. All Inventor does is make some spare parts for the vehicle. No, Autodesk are co-responsible. For people that aren't fluent in English, co-responsible means Autodesk are equally responsible is the actual energy company for the destruction of the planet and the mining of the coal. You know, if you're going to attack somebody with information and, and facts, you've got to get your facts right. And this is just, it's just like pissing it in the wind, to be honest, like it's really, really poor. So you, cause you've got SolidWorks actively supporting that mining operation in Australia, which is a burning and it really is. But then you've also got SolidWorks success stories, newer ones than the Autodesk one. But we'll just, should we just conveniently overlook these? Because what, you can't get a hold of anyone from SolidWorks? I don't know, but they have success stories about mining vehicles. There's one, there's another one, Getman Mines. Use SolidWorks to make mining vehicles to support mining operations, right? And then, of course, you've got uh, your profiteering platform, which supports, sponsors, funds, enables Formula One, which is a very polluting sport. But we'll overlook that, shall we? In this Bloomberg article, is it's just dripping in absolute nonsense. Uh, there's various, you know, air quotes, experts sort of coming out of out of the woodwork to, hey, like this, this, this is Autodesk's environmental chart and where they sit on the scale compared to companies of similar value, of which I didn't think Ford was similarly valued to Autodesk. I very much doubt they were. Not sure what the units are in either, but Ford produced 304 million units of pollution every uh, year or to 2021 emissions compared to Autodesk's 112,000. 304 million versus Autodesk at 112,000. This is a grossly exaggerated line. Turn it in, take a day off. Uh, it's no wonder the company dismisses the activists' claims. Exactly, mate. Exactly. And then you've got experts coming out of the woodwork, like Sir Shannon Lloyd, no idea who that is, but researches corporate climate reporting at Concordia University in Montreal and needs to talk about something to sort of justify her budgets and her reasons for, for continuing in her role. Does Autodesk want to be a company that publicizes its initiatives to be net zero, but at the same time creates products for oil gas companies? Shannon, you're a researcher, you need to do some research. Autodesk does not create products for oil and gas companies. You can take that to the bank, mate. They just absolutely don't. 
And then you've got questions further down by the likes of Jacqueline Allen of somewhere Salt of Baxter. Maybe that coal plant is a one-off. <laughs> Oh, mate, it's like it's like they've got to ask questions, but it, it just doesn't matter if the questions are competent, right? Maybe the coal plant is a one-off. Maybe it's their top client. We have no idea. And you, I think that's very evident. Nobody here has got any idea. Why not just go on and say, maybe RWE are responsible for all of Autodesk's $5 billion in revenue every year. We don't know. Maybe RWE own Autodesk. We don't know, but we're going to say it anyway and ask the question. Maybe RWE and Autodesk have people on site together, shaking hands and playing games and singing kumbaya, making the vehicles work and digging up the ground. Maybe maybe Andrew, the CEO, goes down to site every day with a shovel and digs up the coal, working on the coal mines. Do, 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 do. Uh, some people say a man is made out of mud. Maybe that's going on. We just don't know, but we're going to say it anyway. But he, he kind of goes on at the end and says, Autodesk is not the only company complicit in projects that harm the climate. He just hoped it would be the one that listened. I mean, this is not... The, the actions of somebody who's just hoping a company's going to listen to him. This is an absolute war he's waging. He's turned up outside their offices. He's picketed outside their offices. He's, they've had to call the police to get rid of him, which he obviously takes as a hostile action. But no, Autodesk have got about 10,000 staff. Who, when somebody just emerges out of the woodwork and starts chanting at them, it's a public nuisance. Yes, you have the right to, to demonstrate. All that. I, I, I don't profess to be an expert in all that, but if it crosses the line, if you're disrupting business, then yes, the... They've got the right to call the police just as much as you think you've got the right to be there. Uh, and then this is kind of his ending. Uh, change is necessary to sustain life on Earth. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. But you're just fighting the wrong battle, in my opinion. Autodesk operations are not sustainable. They actually are. They're one of the most sustainable green companies going. And um, he kind of, again, in the article, he, he says that Autodesk have got no right to call themselves green. So yeah, Autodesk Le Mercier was at the protest, which apparently Greta Thunberg was at at the mine. Of course she was. Why wouldn't she? I thought it was Thunberg. It doesn't matter. But uh, they were they were campaigning, I don't know, trying to disrupt the mine and they got arrested and taken away or detained. But Le Mercier was at the protest. He's been in a multi-year campaign against Autodesk, disrupting events, heckling executives, which I've, which I've shown you, and basically just being an absolute c he says the company can't call itself green unless it's stopped selling software to the fossil fuel industry. Just more ridiculous statements that lose your credibility. So what he's saying here is like Autodesk can't call themselves green, a green company, until they stop their software being used within a lawful legal operation. Basically, Autodesk could run their entire operation out of mud huts. Their employees could ditch cars, any sort of fossil fuel burning transport, and swim to work. Uh, they could ditch all their clothes that had been manufactured in sweatshops in China and instead dress themselves in sustainably sourced bamboo loincloths with woven eucalyptus leaves. Uh, they could work on, I don't know what, chalkboards or something to design their products on the computers that they can't use. But if those products that they eventually do manage to create are ending up on a coal mine, you're not a green company. It's like, shut up, man, take a day off. They're, they are a green company, by all accounts. In context, they are. Uh, it's, just, it's just absolutely ridiculous. It really is. But one thing that's quite important to pick out of that is legal and lawful industry, which is what mining is. We might not like it just as much as I don't like seeing cows being slaughtered. Or, you know, I went to the farm a couple of days ago with my daughter and, you know, we were stroking the belly of baby pigs that were absolutely adorable. But I know at some point that pig or one that looks very much like it is going to end up in a bacon sandwich on a plate one day. I don't like it. It's not pretty, but it's just, it's something that happens and I, I don't like it, but I'm complicit in it because that's life. And life is coal mining. It's a lawful, legal business that Autodesk have a fiduciary responsibility as being a publicly traded company to sell to, to appease their shareholders. And they can't just arbitrarily stop selling it to mining companies because somebody, a human with an Autodesk, decides one day he doesn't like the industry. Where does that stop as well? You can't run a business like that. What if someone watches a Netflix documentary on fishing trawlers and suddenly decides to hit the kibosh on the licenses that's being sold to any company that's involved in the manufacture or design of fishing boats? You, you just can't go down there. It's not possible. It's a legal, lawful industry. And it's sad fact of the matter is it's still needed for the ongoing functioning of human civilization. That's just a fact. We have to wind it back or we're f Just attacking Autodesk is not the answer. Lobbying against government, and tell you what is also not the answer, throwing fucking tomato soup over invaluable historic human artifacts and paintings and damaging statues and disrupting people's lives. Like, 
planting yourself in a road to stop, stop people getting to work, all that kind of stuff. People's lives have to go on. We've been thrust onto this planet the way we have, where we are at a certain time, and people have to get on with their lives. And the more damage these people do to their cause, the worse it's going to get, because, right, stopping someone going to work by holding up a road is only going to cause, I don't know, anti- you're just going to antagonise people, and then they're just going to not like you for it and not like your cause, just out of stubbornness uh, and, and revenge. In, in some ways. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. That's probably about enough. Uh, that was Autodesk Earth. Uh, I, I can't see it going anywhere. Autodesk will continue to make Inventor. It's going to continue to be used within those industries the same way it's used in any other industry. It's used in more positive industries than it'll be used in negative industries. But we're not going to focus on that, are we? Because that doesn't make headlines. But uh, there you go. I know Autodesk can't come out publicly and say a lot of this stuff. They've had to be very polite on, on you know, public facing things. But Uh, That's how I see it. Probably won't touch on this again. That is what it is, but that'll do me for now. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Neil Cross. If you want more videos like this, maybe then get subscribed, all that kind of stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Doodles.